Good morning. For those of you that may be wondering, why so many priests today, and who is this priest who is speaking to us? Maybe you're like, who's this priest celebrating Mass? I haven't seen him up there before. Well, I'd like to explain for anyone who came in late or didn't get the memo that this is a very special occasion. This is the very first Mass that Father Randy Raker is celebrating, having been ordained yesterday. Might have been very hard to tell because so far he's doing he's doing great. <laughs> this is a very special occasion indeed, and I don't know if you realize this, but I want to um, make a special mention at the beginning of this mass that there's actually an indulgence that's offered to those who come to the first mass of a priest. But you have to follow all of the normal prescriptions, so check those out. You can look them up online. But um, This is a very, very beautiful occasion. Even that fact alone should tell you that this is very, very special. And I uh, was given the great privilege by Father Randy to preach his first Mass. You may go, well, wait a second, we want to hear from him, right? But remember, he's been a deacon uh, for several months and has been preaching already, and he has a lot of details to focus on today. So there's always a tradition of having a priest preach your first Mass to give you one less thing to worry about on the big day. I had the pleasure of hosting, at the time, just seminarian Randy, uh, at my parish in Panama City where I was serving at the time in 2021, and it is great to be with uh, him and with other priests who have known him from uh, growing up in Iowa, uh, from his formation in Wisconsin, and from his many years down in South Florida where he got that lovely tan. I ask you to pray with and for me as I seek to speak a word to you as you come to Mass to be nourished by the Word and by the sacrament to give you the strength to live your calling for this upcoming week. But also understand, I want to speak a word specifically to Father Randy on this very special occasion. In our gospel that we have just heard today, Jesus has cured a person's deafness and his speech impediment, fulfilling literally the prophecy of Isaiah in chapter 35. Jesus is doing something amazing that testifies to who he is, the long-awaited Messiah, and even more than that, what he is doing can only be done by divine power, identifying him as truly the Son of God. What a wonderful opportunity on the occasion of the first Mass of a priest for us to ask ourselves, whom does God use to heal today? Who has what it takes to cure deafness today, to cure blindness? To whom has God given the sacramental graces to do the wonderful things we have just heard? To whom has God given the commission to do what he commands to do. Whose vocation is it to be another Jesus in the world today? Well, here's a little uh, insight. It's not just this guy sitting up here. Who and what Jesus is by nature, all of the baptized, All of you are by participation, even as we reflected in our opening prayer, O God, by whom we are redeemed and receive adoption. You are sons and daughters of God. You are heirs of the kingdom of heaven. And it is into your hearts as baptized Christians that the Holy Spirit has been poured out in abundance. When you consider the Great Commission to teach and to baptize all nations with the signs of the gospel's power, healings, deliverance, speaking in foreign tongues, this is for all the baptized. The difference of what only a priest can do on a weekly basis is a much smaller difference. Only a priest 
can consecrate bread and wine to become the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ. Only a priest can absolve sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. This is so important to remember what the baptized have been empowered to do, not only here in our parish communities, but even as Jesus was out in the Decapolis, out beyond the boundaries of this parish, to fulfill your vocation as laypersons, to be the salt of the earth and the light of the world, to witness that Jesus is alive and at work in the ministry of the church that continues in his name. So, Father Randy, this is a little bit of my gift to you on the the day of your first Mass. We've been focusing a lot on you on the last couple days, and this message for your new congregation here at the cathedral is to remind you that you are special, but not that special. (laughs) But also, I hope that this reflection for the whole community can also give you encouragement and consolation that the ministry you are taking on as a priest is not for you to do alone. As a priest, as a leader in this faith community, you are called to identify the talents and the spiritual gifts of all the baptized and to raise up their leadership capacity. And as one priest speaking to another, be true to doing the things that only you can do as a priest. As I reflect on the day of my first, uh, on the day of my ordination and first Mass, no matter how long you've been preparing for this day, it is always surreal. If it's amazing enough to realize the dignity of the baptized, how much more to now be a sharer in the ministerial priesthood of Jesus Christ, the great and merciful High Priest, and to realize that just as amazing as it is in the life of Jesus, the prophecy of Isaiah is being fulfilled. Now, in the priest of today, Jesus' actions are being fulfilled. Remember, the priest during the Mass does not say, this is Jesus' body. He says, this is my body. This is my blood. Speaking in the person of Jesus Christ, the head of the church. He does not say in confession, Jesus or the Trinity absolves you, but rather, I absolve you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Parishioners, if my reflection on the dignity and the commission of the baptized seems daunting to you, and if you don't feel worthy of such a high calling to be Jesus in the world, and to do what he did by the power of the Spirit, if you are afraid, welcome to the club. All the more for the priest who accepts a greater responsibility to minister in the name of Jesus. All the more for Father Randy and for all the ordained who yesterday one of the prayers, uh, and in fact one one of the mandates or commissions, after Father Randy had been ordained and consecrated and vested in his new priestly vestments and his hands had been anointed with the holy chrism, the same oil, holy oil that we are confirmed with and even chrismated at baptism, he was then handed the paten to hold the bread for mass and the chalice to hold the wine. And he was told this by the bishop. Receive the oblation of the holy people to be offered to God. Understand. Understand what you do. Imitate what you celebrate. And conform your life to the mystery of the Lord's cross. This is a great calling. In our first reading, Isaiah anticipating the people who were in a dark and difficult time awaiting the Lord's promises to be fulfilled, senses their fear and tells them, be strong, fear not. 
Father Randy, as a brother priest, I assure you, two things that you can remember and for all of us to remember when we are afraid of the greatness of our calling. The first is to remember that the Lord is with you as he promised. He goes before you. And he has conquered the eternal consequences of sin and death. When you are afraid, you can ask yourself, what am I really afraid of? Does the object of my fear have power to cause eternal consequences for me? Is this fear rooted in the Holy Spirit's gift of the fear of the Lord? The fear of not wanting to offend perfect love of God and neighbor? Or is this an earthly fear due to focusing more on what on myself and what I might lose, forgetting faith, hope, and love? Remember in 1 John chapter 4, verse 18, the apostle tells us, there is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear. As a priest, you will have difficult days. You will have fearful days. Remember the words of Psalm 143, which says, In the morning, let me hear of your mercy, Lord, for I trust in you. One of the things that has helped me over the years when dealing with work stress or anxiety is to make a simple prayer, even my waking thought while still in bed before I get out. Lord, help me to remember that there is nothing I can do today or fail to do today that will change your infinite love for me. And let the remembrance of his perfect love drive out all fear. And second, Father Randy, I have some bad news for you. You ready? You, You can take it? Okay. You are going to make mistakes. Isn't it amazing that the Lord calls us to such greatness, knowing in advance that we will fail from time to time? So, Father Randy, when that happens, I invite you to ask yourself, how would a child think of and respond to that mistake? A child who has full awareness of the Father's love and total trust in the Father's ability to make up for what is ever lacking in you. Know this that the Lord is calling you to greatness, but he knows perfectly better than us that he is fully capable and desiring to make up for what is lacking in you. And the Lord will use those failures and and mistakes to grow you. He will continue to challenge you, and when the next challenge comes, the fear may return, but take courage once more. Hear me well, all of you gathered here today. There will never be a time in the life of a disciple when you do not need to renew and deepen trust in the Lord. Don't seek to have it all, to be so strong that you are never afraid. Don't seek to provide everything you could possibly need. Rather, learn to love your poverty of spirit. So, Father Randy, don't be afraid when people ask you questions that are impossible to answer, when the needs of the people exceed what you can provide, when you are fully aware that you are not in control, and when, as for Father Jacob and for you, obedience takes you in different directions and maybe at different times that are not your choosing. When you don't know how, or when you don't know when, God will fulfill the rest of his promises to you and those you serve. And finally today, I want to offer a word about Our Lady. Today, September 8th, is the day we would normally commemorate Mary's birthday, the Nativity of the Blessed Virgin. And just this past week, 
In my current ministry at the seminary, I led a group of our seminarians from all over the southeast on a pilgrimage to St. Augustine and to Tallahassee, and we were there at the shrine of Our Lady of La Leche, uh, where on this day, September 8, 1565, the Spanish explorers and their Franciscan missionaries with them dedicated the shrine to Our Lady. What a beautiful day to have your first Mass. Pray to have Mary's receptivity in her poverty of spirit and be encouraged of all that the Lord did through her poverty. Ponder often her total trust and surrender that the Lord's promises to her would be fulfilled. I encourage you as a brother priest to stay close to her and to pray the rosary daily to entrust your heart to her as a celibate priest. She is the very model of the church as Jesus' beloved. As our spiritual mother, she loves you as a son. And as mystical bride of the bridegroom, she offers the love and affection of her heart to sustain your heart in your total gift of self as a celibate priest. And finally, Daily, entrust your priesthood to her. May she help you to savor this Mass and every Mass as if it were your first Mass, as if it were your last Mass, as if it were your only Mass.